it's not essential that they have something existing in place, but part of the application process is demonstrating your ability to deliver in this area. If you've chosen disability as, a, as an area of, uh, of focus for the programs and how they're to be developed, um, there is an expectation that you will come to the table with some pretty solid um, either evidence or uh, plan in place to be able to develop it. We're not expecting sports, um, particularly when we start looking at the regional and in-country capability, we're not expecting them to have a highly evolved system in terms of, of inclusion. Um, but we, and this again, this is the underpinning of a partnership and that's why we involve the Australian uh, NSOs, Australian organisations and a number of the regional bodies as well are, are quite advanced in this area. So it's a, it's a chance for all of those levels to come together and demonstrate that there is an ability to move forward. But, you know, we're not expecting a high level um, to start with across the board, but certainly the intention and a plan to be able to implement it is, 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 would be required. Anybody else? Yeah, Lorraine. Yeah, um, maybe this is a fairly basic question, but in putting an application forward, are you looking for a specific project that is um, one of those countries, one of those nine countries, or are you looking at multiple countries? Um, and and what's the, yep. the weight yeah. as far as your outcomes? That yep. No, it's a good question and, and one we get a lot. Um, we, we do have a, a large geographic area obviously that we, we're involved with. Um, I guess look, drawing on you know, Nick's comments before about lessons learned, one of the things that we have learnt um, not just through this program but across the board in Sport for Development is to start small and, and to build up um, and try and achieve those wins in a, in, a, in a controlled way and then scale and expand. Um, we don't have a prescription. Um, sports can come to us with a, a multiple country proposal or a single country proposal. Um, but we've got to keep in mind the, the ability to deliver and deliver on the outcomes. Um, we have programs at the moment, uh, football's a good example, where it has a Pacific wide program. Um, it's a, it's, a, it's a sport development um, mass participation program for six to 12 year olds. Um, and it does that very effectively, but it does it under a larger budget uh, and provides a lot of resources itself to deliver that. So in answer to your question, we don't, we're not prescribing what countries you should, um, you know, we are, we are saying we've got to work in, within these nine countries, but it can be spread or it can be focused. But I guess we would encourage you to, to take on good practice and to work in those countries that you think you're likely to get the most benefit uh, and be able to deliver on the outcomes of the program, but also what the partners are, are most able and capable to deliver. We don't want sports to be put into a difficult situation with this funding and feel obliged to provide something that, is, that, that covers such a thin area across many, many countries, because that's just not sustainable for, for anybody. Sophie. From the Sports Commission, and um, I'm wondering um, perhaps some clarification that might be needed to communicate to our audience today. Uh, in relation to the applications, it seems that some of the questions it's around, well, we don't have all the answers, or we don't have all the intelligence you know, to inform applications. So perhaps um, you four people on the, uh, on the stage. If you could add uh, in relation that it's actually we're interested in the process in the application that mm. we've been undertaking. So if yep. to... Nick, do you want to yeah, sure. run okay. through that? So in terms of um, the application, as I kind of alluded to before, I think um, uh, the ASC is able to provide a level of support um, to um, applicants as they're going through this process. I think, the, as, I, as I said, the best way would probably be to develop a draft application. So all the application forms and these sorts of things are available online at the moment. I think it's important to read the documentation really, uh, really thoroughly uh, so that you're across the expectations under the grant guidelines. Um, there's the supplementary material as well that will um, 
provide a bit more context about where the where the program fits um, and then from there I, I think uh, the application form is is reasonably um, self-explanatory naturally there'll be uh, questions that will arise through these processes and the ASC is able to provide that level of support um, uh, I'd encourage you to contact me directly if you've got questions but I think the the way that I've been describing it to sports to this point is that it's best to list all questions that you've got, email them to me and then we'll arrange a time for an hour or so to provide um, direct answers on those questions um, as they come. Uh, is, is there any more? I guess what I meant is that the, the actual, perhaps, what would need to be demonstrated in the education, um, provided I'm right, is actually the process that you'd be undertaking, choosing to undertake to go about the programs that you're interested in in engaging with in the industry. So you won't have all the answers, but the process that you will want to take to actually determine you know, your key areas and how you will engage with the people. Sure, that's a, that's a good point. So I think what we're looking for within the application is um, a description of the connection between the Australian NSO and the regional federation. Um, and that will in turn sort of, I think, describe uh, the capacity of this partnership to deliver in each of the countries. Now, um, as has been suggested, you know, through the questions, um, to what to what extent is a is a finalised sort of idea of how things look required within the applications? Well, I think it's, what is crucial is that there's a willingness to engage with um, with different partners, uh, even outside of the sport. Uh, sport sector um, to to deal with that expertise that will help support uh, the delivery of a program so um, that external um, support can can come in terms of implementation of program activities but also in terms of monitoring and evaluating um, what what the outcomes of, of programs are likely to be so I think um, I think it's crucial within an application to to um, if not uh, if if Applicants aren't in a position to sort of suggest that they have established relationships with um, non-sport sector organisations. I think it's crucial to describe a willingness to um, to engage in that sort of manner, and 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 I think that's where um, it'll be important to to um, indicate an appreciation of the context that we've been trying to provide of how this program fits into the aid program more broadly today. Twilling, twilling the pen. <laughs> yep. Um, sorry, still with the audience. Right. Um, one question: You talk about targeted projects within the different nations. Obviously, there's going to be varying levels of capacity to undertake the programs. Is there scope within the partnership to focus on a core pro or core project of mass participation, while also increasing the level? of organisations within developed nations to bring them up to that level to engage in the program in future years? Yeah, sorry, um, can you just reword that? I <laughs> didn't quite um, get it. So, is to, to implement a mass participation yes. program in, in certain nations will, will be easier than others yep. because of their current involvement within that sport. Is there capacity within the partnership program to implement a, a mass participation program, for example. Yes. And, um, and then supplement that with the development of other nations who are in the development phase of their sporting, uh, say for example, sailing, mm. um, to bring them up to a level where they could potentially be included in that partnership program in the future years. Yeah, absolutely. Sorry, I, I wasn't quite getting it clearly. but. Um, the, the, yeah, the question um, for the camera is in relation to delivering a mass participation program, but then offering opportunities for to bring other countries up to to a standard. Um, absolutely, and I think um, this is where we try and marry the expectation and the uh, the core work of a, of a sport from a regional perspective, particularly as they're answerable to an international body. Um, to try and offer a, a mass participation, uh, for example, a mass participation program, and having it on offer to everybody uh, in, the, in their confederation. Um, and this is an area that um, I think 
you know, in some of our discussions with rugby union have, have grappled with in terms of, of delivering something that is for, for everybody, um, but at the same time being able to make it scalable or making it uh, you know, proportional to the funding that you're actually getting. Um, there, there are a couple of examples whereby that approach has been taken um, and there, you, you'll read in the guidelines as well that um, part, of, part of the approach is about co-contribution as well. So working with the existing resources of sport, uh, knowing that they have a, um, a requirement to, to reach a certain um, group of people, whether it's a number of countries or, or what have you, but to try and lift them up to a standard. And, and I guess the, the only caution there is, is in terms of the amount of money that's available through this program to do such a thing over a larger, a larger scale. Um, we talk about mass participation programs, um, but over four years with the funding that's available to be able to deliver that effectively and, and to, I guess, provide some form of uh, equality across the services that are available is a challenge. Um, and if sports wanted to do that comprehensively over nine countries, they would need to contribute to that process, probably financially and, and um, resource-wise, to make it effective. Um, but another part in answering your question is, is offering the lessons learned. Um, we try and facilitate uh, a lot of discussion between sports. Uh, Nick alluded to in-country coordination between sports. And there can be a lot of exchange about how to develop programs and how to develop perhaps uh, lesser developed national federations and bring them up to a standard based on what you're implementing and the lessons learnt from, from current programs. So look, there's certainly the, the capability to do that within the funding, but we've just got to keep in mind how it's delivered the scale on which it's delivered and the ability to actually meet the outcomes. Anyone else? No? Okay, um, look, again, thank you very much uh, for coming today. I know um, it, it, is, it can be a complicated area um, and I'd really encourage you to, to keep in contact with us and make contact. Um, Nick, uh, as he mentioned, uh, a process for people to, to provide uh, questions, uh, if they have any. Um, we have a fact sheet that we're developing and that'll be uh, available on the web. But we're also, as we get questions, we're actually forming a, um, a frequently asked questions section as well that we'll, we'll be putting up online. Um, so hopefully that will, that will mitigate uh, quite, a, quite a few of the questions. Um, one thing I would say though, and, and this is often the case um, in, in talking with sports that are, are fairly new to the development space, is to really take up the opportunity to have a look at some of the case studies that were mentioned. Um, the joint strategy also has some very small sections that highlight examples of, uh, of successful programs that, that, we've been, uh, that we've established in those particular thematic areas. So have a look at those it gives you a bit of a, a view of what it might look like. And, and then that way, when you're talking to um, your colleagues within your sports, both regionally and domestically, that you, you can have that conversation about something that you think, yeah, this looks like what we can deliver. Um, so I'm really, I guess my, the reason for mentioning that is because at the end of it, we do have to make it very practical. We have to make it achievable. Uh, and we do also understand that sports aren't always necessarily operating in this area that's probably slightly outside of their, of their core business. Um, and we want to make that as, as simple and, uh, and straightforward as we can. So I encourage you to have a look at those documents. The joint strategy is mentioned in the documentation and there's a link. You just click on the word joint strategy and it goes to the joint strategy itself. Um, and uh, yeah, as I said, it, it has a number of, of small stories just a very simple overview of some of the some of the successful programs. So with that, thank you very much, and thanks to Rob, Allison, and Nick um, as well. Um, and uh, we're available if uh, we're hanging around for a little while. Um, please um, stay and have a chat. Thank you very much. <laughs>